everyone. Aloha and welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started shortly, uh, but for now, just go ahead and kick back, relax. We're going to give everyone just a few minutes to go ahead and uh, get settled in, and we'll begin shortly. If you guys have any questions to kick us off, uh, feel free to go ahead and put any questions you guys may have in the Q&A section. Um, we'll be happy to answer your questions that you have um, at the appropriate time. If you're just joining us, we'll be getting started here in just a couple minutes, so feel free to kick back, relax, and we'll get started soon. All right, so just as a few reminders, uh, this is going to be a webinar style uh, where you all can see us. However, we cannot see you all. Uh, so definitely, if you guys have questions, please feel free to go ahead and put them in the Q&A. Uh, we'll be checking the Q&A, but we will not be checking the chat. Uh, so just make sure to go ahead and insert that. Put those questions. Uh, we have some great resources here for you today to talk to you more about the VA benefits. So definitely, this is a great opportunity. We're so excited to have these two departments come and join us here today to be able to talk more about all these questions that we usually get that we can't answer ourselves, so as admissions. Uh, so just remember to keep putting those questions in the Q&A. We'll go ahead and answer them shortly. And I'm going to go ahead and kick it off uh, to James. Thank you. Aloha, everyone, from the Office of Veteran Student Services. Um, I am James, and we'll be talking a little bit about uh, who we are and how we can assist you on campus. Slide. As I said, I'm James Solano, and I'm the director of the Office of Veteran Student Services. I am retired U.S. Army uh, with over 26 years of service in the uh, field artillery. So it's my contact information. Uh, feel free to contact me with any questions that you may have. So you can take a second here and look at our mission statement. Um, we are committed to enhancing the veteran and military connected student experience uh, through supporting academic success and providing services to assist in the transition from military service to higher education. So some of our on-campus veteran resources we have, uh, what you see here is a picture of our veterans lounge. So, it's a great place for the veteran students or the military connected students to come in. We have computers, we have printers, we have snacks, drinks. Uh, they can sit, um, you know, hopefully we get back to on campus so we can utilize this again, but it's a great place for them to meet um, other military students or other military connected students and really form a good bond. Um, the Office of Veteran Student Services, uh, you see our email address, ovss at hawaii.edu. So that's our main office. Uh, you can email us with questions you have. A couple of the great things that we have is we have our veteran success on campus, the uh, VSOC counselor, which is vocational rehabilitation. Uh, if you have a service-connected disability, you may qualify for this entitlement. So you can talk to our VRNE counselor, uh, Ms. Higa. There's her information. Uh, she'll go through some paperwork. Uh, you'll do uh, an online video, fill out a little bit more paperwork, and then they'll let you know if you qualify uh, for that additional benefit. And it could be up to an extra 48 months of schooling for you. And we also have our Veterans Integration to Academic Leadership, our vital counselor. So on campus, again, if you have a military connected disability or a rating percentage, you can use our clinical psychologist on campus. So you don't have to go to a VA facility off campus. She's on campus and always available for her services. 
Uh, th these are just a few of our campus resources that we have. Our Veterans Lounge, which we talked about. Uh, Kakua, which is our services for students with disabilities. Uh, if you need uh, more testing time or if you need special accommodations for classes, you would see Kakua for that. Our online learning academy, uh, when our lounge is open, we have tutors in the lounge uh, Monday through Friday and they offer free services um, for math and sciences. Uh, financial aid, uh, student parents at Manoa, if you have children, then that's a great group to uh, get with and because they support and encourage and they mentor the student parents because it is challenging. And we have our Women's Center providing personal and academic support for the, for the success of women and LGBT students at UHM. It's another great resource that we use, uh, very supportive of the veteran students and the military connected students. And the last thing I'd like to go over is the, uh, we have a vet talk on the uh, second and fourth Mondays of each month at 3 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. And it's just a talk story session. If you've got questions or if you just want to reach out to us, um, you know, just email us at the OVSS at hawaii.edu. We'll send you the links out and we go an hour or we go two hours. It doesn't matter. It's an open mic time. We talk story. Uh, we talk about our favorite Netflix, favorite foods and places here. Uh, if you're an incoming student, maybe you want to reach out and see where the best place to live is or where great uh, places to eat are. What are some of the things that we do around here to pass the time? So uh, just uh, reach out to us. We'll get you those links, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Again, James Solano, I am the director at OVSS, and thank you for your time. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle, and I am one of the VA school certifying officials at UH Manoa. Um, today, now we will be going over vener veteran benefits, and we are located under the Office of the Registrar. So I'm going to be going over how VA benefits works. So there is, before coming to, starting your courses at UH Manoa, there's a list of approved programs at UH Manoa. Um, please refer to this website. It's called WEAMS. And this is an important step because we can only certify students who are using, or certify students programs based off of this list. And then if you've received your admissions packet already, if it's the residency status says WUI or non-resident, specifically for chapter 33 and 31 students, um, you should follow up your residency status with the residency counselor at the Office of Admissions to determine if you're el eligible for the veterans exemption. The reason we ask of this is because for chapter 33 and 31 students specifically, they only, the benefits only covers the UH Manoa in-state rate. Okay, now moving on. So now that you, prior to starting, I'm sorry if you guys can hear that, but please visit our general website uh, for information. I've My apologies, I'm gonna let that pass. Okay, my apologies guys. Um, so please refer to our UH Manoa Registrar's website, VA website for a general guide about how our VA processes work at UH Manoa. And I've also included a QR code. If you would like to screenshot that, it'll take you directly to the website as well. And then the next step would be um, emailing our office. It's, our email is uhmva at hawaii.edu for email for new student paperwork and then make sure when you're contacting us to contact us from your hawaii.edu email just because the university considers this email account as the official means of communication between offices and the student and then continuing on um, usually some students will email this to us and request for new student paperwork at the same time but if you haven't done so already um, the student must apply to use their benefits at UH Manoa, and the website is through the va.gov. And then from there, it normally takes about 30 days for the VA to process the application and mail a physical copy of the certificate of eligibility directly to the student. 
um, just make sure that when you receive your certificate of eligibility, it has to be addressed to you. And it will normally say like the percentage of your benefits, how many months you have left and so forth. And it's like an official letter as well. And then the next step, there's a lot of uh, different parts to this step, but the main thing is the certification process. So every semester there will be paperwork that you will have to fill out and get approved by an advisor for, in order for your courses to be certified. And then after when we submit your certification, meaning your enrollment information for that semester, you will receive a confirmation email to your hawaii.edu account. And then from there, it's best to follow up with the Department of VA in Oklahoma on when the payments will be sent to either you or the school. And then the last thing is um, for every semester that you wanna use benefits for, we require students to submit paperwork. And then now I'll be going over the different chapter VA benefits. So the first one is chapter 33 post 9-11 GI Bill. Uh, once you are certified, the VA will submit payment for tuition and fees to the school on the student's behalf. And the next one is chapter 31, Veteran Readiness and Employment. So students would work with a counselor to submit an e-authorization form. And the e-authorization document, sorry, is basically lists what kind of services um, the student is eligible for in the system. And normally it's sent to our office, the registrar's bookstore and the parking office. And the last three are very similar. Chapter 30, Active Duty Montgomery GI Bill, Chapter 1606, Selected Reserve Montgomery GI Bill, and Chapter 35, Survivors, Dependents, and Independence Education Assistance. All students using any of these three benefits, they will receive a monthly stipend paid directly to them. And then specifically for Chapter 30 and 1606, they must, must verify their enrollment through the WAVE portal each month. Now moving on to some key things to keep in mind. So we can only certify courses that count towards your declared major and students cannot use VA benefits towards prerequisite courses for minors and certificates. And then if undergraduate students do not meet the full-time requirement, meaning that they're continuously enrolled in 12 credits for the fall and spring semester, then they will not be eligible for the full monthly housing allowance from the VA. And then also enrollment status for summer terms for undergraduate students needs to be discussed with the Department of VA because they determine the full-time status during the summer. And then the last thing is if there are any parents in this room, this is very, or parents or spouses, um, this is very important for FERPA. Uh, it stands for the Federal Education Rights Privacy Act. So under FERPA, prior written consent must be obtained before uh, the student's educational records are disclosed to a third party. So students, um, it's best that if you would like to disclose uh, information to let's say a parent or your spouse, um, it's best to contact us from your hawaii.edu account and then we can provide further instructions on how to fill out the FERPA form. And then here's our contact information. It's best to screenshot this. So uh, our email, uhmva at hawaii.edu. Our VA staff is currently working remotely right now from Monday through Fridays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then any questions, other questions relating to VA payments, stipends, remaining VA benefits, it's best to contact the Department of Veterans Affairs Education Call Center. And this is their phone number, 888-442-4551. And please be cognizant of when contacting them because they are located on Central Time. And then that's it. Did, now we'll take any questions. Thanks. Thanks so much, Michelle and James. We appreciate it. Looks like we've had some uh, great questions come on in. So students, if you guys still have more questions, by all means, go ahead and keep putting them in the uh, Q&A section. Uh, we are definitely here to answer any questions you may have. 
Uh, so one of the big questions, of course, is that the VA recently announced that GI Bill users would be charged the in-state tuition rate uh, starting in the fall. How is this going to affect students who are admitted uh, under the WULI? So yes, effective August, I believe first 2021, um, students who are enrolled at UH and are living in Hawaii, um, they must be guaranteed the in-state tuition rate. So it's best if you, um, you would have to contact the residency counselor at the Office of Admissions to see how that will be determined. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I know we got uh, another question asking about similar things. Uh, so I'll go ahead and repost the residency inquiry request form. Uh, so students, if you were trying to get a hold of one of our residency officers in the Office of Admissions, uh, best way at this time is to go ahead and fill out that form and then they will go ahead and contact you via email and be able to assist you with answering your questions. And so um, another question is, is uh, relating to, of course, the GI bills. Uh, the student says, I separated a year ago with full GI bills, uh, GI benefits. I live in Texas currently. Will I still be able to attend and receive the in-state tuition? I believe it should be possible since um, you've been discharged for a year now. Usually, I believe that it's three years from their discharge date that they're eligible for in-state rate. But like I mentioned um, with the previous question, it's best to contact a residency counselor. Yeah, I would say just contact our team. They're definitely, we appreciate them. They're the experts when it comes to anything residency because each situation is definitely extremely different. Uh, they each have their own unique situations. We don't want to categorize everyone in the same cat, uh, section when they may not be uh, scenarios. And then I saw, James, I saw that you were able to answer the question about uh, where to send in the COE uh, via email. So that was perfect. Thanks for getting that. And then I saw some other questions that was more relating to international uh, students. Uh, so for questions on that, I'll, I'll go ahead and put our Manoa admissions email in the chat. All right. Uh, so do you guys, uh, would you guys be able to talk a little bit more about how the VA uh, covers tuition deposit? If, if not, I got you too for that. So, um, are you, Amber, are you referring yeah. to the $200 tuition deposit? Yeah, the $200 tuition deposit, you got it. So I believe for chapter 31 students, if you um, have your e-authorization, I believe you can submit that um, to the Office of Admissions. Or if you're not using Chapter 31 benefits, I would request for a tuition deposit waiver from the Admissions Office. And then I'm not too sure if there's additional documents you would have to provide to prove that you're using VA benefits. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that, that's what I was, under, from my understanding too, was pretty much at least for the students I've worked with is if they say that they're planning on using GI benefits, usually, yeah, they just email our main office of admissions requesting for a tuition, dep uh, tuition waiver deposit, just because naturally you're not putting that $200 towards your payment for, you know, tuition if you're technically using your GI benefits. It doesn't make sense to do that and then it gets kind of complicated. So definitely be sure to let us know. Um, definitely make sure to not tell us that you're 100% confirmed and you want that tuition deposit waived until you are truly confirmed and you know you want to come here and that's that. Just because uh, it just makes it a lot easier for us to say, you know, and if in a month from now you're like, oh wait, something else came up. We'd rather uh, better know once you're 100% committed to us. So definitely just let our Manila admissions office know. And right. in some cases too, Oh, uh, in some cases, too, I've seen some students pay the $200 tuition deposit. Just know that it's going to go back to you um, once the uh, we submit or once the VA submits payment for tuition and fees. Or Yeah, exactly. It's just a matter of time of processing back that refund uh, or however they end up doing it with cashiers. 
Um, so I see a question that asks, uh, what about how uh, chapter 30, uh, thir how chapter 35 VA benefits and how does that work towards like tuition and housing or does it just count for the actual tuition purposes? So for chapter 35, since it's a stipend, it's up to the student in how they want to allocate the money towards their cost of attendance. Um, since they are responsible for paying off their tuition and fees. Yeah, okay, perfect. You know, we get that question with financial aid too. Like, I got this big scholarship, where do I put the money? Like, Wherever you want, <laughs> you know. Perfect. All right, so a question was asking, I think this is more of a residency question that says, can Wooly scholarship apply to Midwest states too? Um, I know as far as Wooly, it's only gonna be for those uh, Western states specifically just because it, it, that's what it's, it's under, it's the Western Undergraduate Exchange. So you do have to be from one of those states to qualify. Um, Michelle, just checking with you to make sure there's no military exemption for WE, at least not as far as I know, but I just wanted to confirm with you that there's no exemption for that. No. Okay, just wanted to be sure. Um, but yeah, so if you have questions about WE, I'll go ahead and uh, grab that link and go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, the states are gonna be uh, California and it gets messed up every single time. It's going to be Alaska, California, Washington, Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, North Dakota, South Dakota, Idaho, Montana, Utah. I think almost all of them, but that gives you a better idea of what kind of states apply for that. Great right, questions. Do you guys have any other questions? Oh yeah, so um, as one of our students is asking, um, are there any uh, VA options for helping to relocate to Hawaii? Yeah, I don't know of any options other than um, like a retiree that would get their last move to wherever they want to go, but. Um, yeah, I haven't seen anything. I'll do some research on that. And if we can get an answer for them, uh, we'll, we'll get it back to you. But I haven't seen anything that's going to, other than a job bringing them here that's willing to help relocate. Yeah, and for those who are wondering, I, um, it, there's definitely plenty of ways to like relocate very cheaply. I think the biggest cost naturally is just going to be the flight itself, um, just depending on if you have any family that you're bringing with you, I know that can definitely get, get crazy, but if it's just yourself, uh, pretty much we have everything here that you could possibly need. I know for me personally, when I relocated from California, I bought everything online and then shipped it, got here and realized that was a terrible, terrible mistake. Do not do that. It was very expensive, not worth it. We have Walmart, Costco, you know, every Target, I was like, we got it all here. So uh, don't stress too much. We can definitely, you'll be set up for success here. And if you ever need tips on how to shop cheap here as well, uh, come join one of our other Q and A's. I got you covered. <laughs> all right, so it looks like um, I can see another great question that asks, um, does a chapter 35 enable us to have a tuition the same as in-state? Michelle, do you know about that? Um, I'm not too sure about that for chapter 35 students. I think it's best if um, they, if you contact a residency counselor at the admissions office. Yeah, absolutely. I know these are good questions. I'm like, man, I'm still too. <laughs> <laughs> and so Brian was asking a great question. Um, if you guys don't know the answer, I can definitely handle this one. Um, but are transfers reserved on campus housing? And then uh, do you guys, just a personal question, if you guys have any uh, options to assist veterans relocating to the state as well. We'll say, yeah, so I know for me personally, um, on-campus housing, it's basically for that, we put the priority is gonna be for incoming freshmen, usually will be in like our freshman towers. We also do have housing available for our transfer students as well. It's not going to be just specifically transfer students. 
it's going to basically be what we call as the upperclassmen housing. So it will be for those students who are sophomores through senior year. Uh, so basically, you have plenty of different options. You can do more of the traditional, like, two beds on each side, like the true dorm style, as they call it. Uh, we also do have in a more of an apartment type style where you do get your own kitchen, which is really nice. And then they also do have the style where it's more sweet style, where you don't have an official kitchen, but you do have like, say, two bedrooms, and then you do have like a hallway that's shared and a bathroom that's shared as well between the two uh, rooms. So there's a lot of different options for housing. Um, definitely, if you guys are an accepted student for this year or currently in progress for this upcoming school year, the housing application just launched on Monday. We we're very excited to see that open up. Uh, housing applications will be due by, uh, it's May 1st of this year. So definitely be sure. I think the biggest thing I see with um, both military students and transfer students is of course, because of the military things can, you know, be very last minute because it has to be. That's just kind of the, world, the lifestyle. Uh, you don't always get a lot of advance notice, unfortunately, uh, is, Definitely, if you think there's a chance that you'll be coming to Manoa uh, and you know you'll be needing on-campus housing, in that situation, uh, definitely just be sure to go ahead and put in the housing application. It's $25 for the housing application. And then if you decide that you're not coming later, you only lose the $25. You don't officially have to pay any housing tuition, uh, housing payments until later on when you go to sign your contract. And at that time, it's about $400. But in the beginning, it's better I would rather have my transfer students and military and veteran students go ahead and put in that housing application than all of a sudden in August be emailing us saying, hey, is it too late to apply for housing? It's two weeks away. Um, we, we get that happens. It happens all the time. And sometimes there are, are availabilities, but it's definitely not guaranteed. So I'd, I'd say rather always be safe than sorry when possible. All right. All right, so it's, uh, it looks like we have a question from Edward, uh, just kind of explaining it. Is uh, So he says that he contacted their residency office, and they said beginning fall 2021, there is a rule change that eliminates the three-year criteria from the veteran tuition exemption. Uh, so my understanding, uh, UH will accept the GI in-state tuition since I passed my three-year mark. Yeah, I would definitely, I think that's going to be one of the situations where um, definitely best to just, yeah, keep talking with the uh, residency office, just because each situation is a little bit unique. But yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I'm glad you contacted them. Good thinking. You're already on it. <laughs> Great. Yes. Do you guys have any, uh, keep bringing on the questions. Uh, we are definitely here for, we love questions, whatever you can think of, you know. <laughs> All right. I was like, Michelle, my hands went off to you. If you, if you know off the top of your head, now I got you. Um, so Austin's asking when the fall semester starts. Um, I'm not too sure. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. I was going to say the, the dates just came out like super recently. So Right. Yeah, um, I was going to say, it is August 23rd. Uh, I just looked it up like an hour ago. That's how the reason I know. I was like, oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's going to be August 23rd is the official start of the semester, uh, the first day of school. And move-in, if you're living on campus, will be the week prior. They will announce the official move-in dates uh, later on when it gets closer. Usually, they announce it like the month before or so. Great questions. Any other questions? We are here. We're ready. <laughs> oh yeah, um, for Michelle, is, is there any important information that you would say is really vital to a student? Like, what would you say are, besides of course, I know you went over a lot of great information in the presentation, but what would you say are like the top questions that you get and where confusion may happen? And then uh, James as well, uh, with any questions you get about veteran benefits as well. So for our office specifically, um, let me see. we process forms usually on a first come first serve basis. And then usually uh, chapter 31 students to have first priority. And then uh, from there, it's a first come first serve basis. And then during, at the beginning of the semester, um, 
there might be delays um, that students experience um, where it might take us longer to certify students based on the date that they submit their paperwork from. So I think that's just an uh, important thing to keep in mind is that when you finish registering for your courses, um, make sure to submit your paperwork to get it approved by your advisor as soon as possible um, before submitting it to our office. Sometimes I know during things like winter break, it might take a while for uh, some advisors to turn it back to the student, the paperwork. Okay. Now, James, what would you say is like the most commonly asked question uh, that you get about that, uh, the different benefits that students have to access on campus? It's just about starting the benefits. And I will tell you, as soon as you find out that you're accepted here and you want to use your benefits, start the process. It's a lengthy process and COVID has probably doubled or tripled that time due to everything being through email now. Since there's no walk-in traffic, um, you know, Michelle, they're getting three to four times the normal emails they would get. So their 24 to 48 hour response time has probably turned closer to probably seven to 10 business days just due to the amount of emails. So start the process early, pay attention to detail, make sure that all your paperwork is correct because if they have to return it to you, then you have to redo it. You go back to the bottom of the queue, then it might be another three or four days before they see your next email as they're servicing. Um, you know, they service close to a thousand veteran students at this university. And that's, um, and that's just the ones using GI benefits or the GI Bill uh, benefits. So, you know, make sure that you get your paperwork started early because that's, you know, and that, that leads back to the biggest question is how long until I receive my payment or can you give me a status on my payment? And right now I, we can't, it's just, it's so uh, backlog just due to COVID with everything being worked off campus. So uh, we just ask for a lot of patience. Uh, Michelle, they, they work hard every day trying to keep up with all the emails, but it's just overwhelming. So uh, just, you know, get it in early, start the process early, make sure everything's correct, be a first time go at that station. And Michelle, Kelly, and Chris will do the best they can to get your stuff to VA to get your benefits started. I would just also like to mention that if uh, you ever run into a situation or you need to contact us directly, um, we do use Google Chats. So if you, on your end, if you email us or chat with us through Google Chats, um, we can respond to you quickly as well. And then we also do phone meetings, um, but you would have to email us to request for those um, Michelle, do you know with the registrar's office, um, are you guys able to answer uh, veteran benefit questions as well on the registrar's front virtual front desk or should that go directly more so to you guys on the side so that, e that uh, VA email? They, you could go to through the registrar's virtual front desk, um, but if uh, I would contact us directly, um, for a quicker answer or a quick turnaround response time. Okay, okay. So I will go ahead and put that email again in the chat. That way uh, you can go ahead and email them directly for the most efficient response. And yeah, I can definitely, uh, I, I could not agree more with James that we definitely have had a huge increase of emails in all departments. So uh, definitely feel free. Like if, you, if it's been like, you know, say a week, you still haven't heard back, at least from certain specific departments, feel free to go ahead and follow up with us. There's so many emails coming in right now that we wanna make sure to not miss your email. It's very important to us, of course, uh, but we appreciate your patience during this time. It's definitely a, a unique time previous uh, than previous years. And so I've seen um, some uh, good questions asking a little bit more about like transportation and such. Um, I know, of course, transportation is gonna be a little bit more on the student life side of things. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get around uh, really, uh, the biggest thing I think I always get asked is like, why, how do I get around? Do I bring a car? Do I not? Um, especially I know with military and shipping cars, it can take, you know, say six to 10 weeks to coming from the mainland, depending on where in the U.S. you are coming from. Uh, so something to keep in mind is that we do have a wonderful bus system called uh, The Bus. It's a super original name. Uh, 
where it basically can take you anywhere around island with your student tuition uh, fees or student fees. It's actually all included. So the bus pass is complimentary to being a student. So definitely take advantage of that. It's a lot safer than some of the buses on the mainland. Um, I know, especially comparing it to Southern California, it's a lot nicer. <laughs> so and definitely feel free to go ahead and use that. We do have a wonderful bike share program as well that uh, is going to be all throughout downtown Honolulu as well as Waikiki and, and campus. Also, if you guys are wanting, uh, we do have a shuttle called the Rainbow Shuttle that will take you approximately one to two miles off campus. Uh, that is free for students as well. So there's a lot of different ways to get around campus. Uh, also, if you're trying to go up to like North Shore and trying to like go hit, hit up the beach or, you know, get grab some poke off campus or something, pretty much the bus will get you anywhere on the island for, for the most part, not every little nook and cranny, but for the most part, it'll get you pretty much wherever you need to go. It just may take some time. Uh, so a lot of our students, uh, I'm sure, Michelle, you can definitely talk more on that. It, a lot of students will tend to like actually meet other students on the bus and socialize and go with each other, uh, bring some games or homework or, you know, whatever to entertain themselves until they uh, get to their destination area they're trying to reach. Right. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would add that, you know, living close to campus, you can bike in. It's, it's great weather here all the time. Uh, the problem with cars is parking is limited on campus and around campus. It's, it can be challenging to find a spot and it's a little expensive. Um, not, I don't want to scare you off, but if you go to the parking site and look at what an annual pass costs or the daily parking rates, it, it can, it can build up pretty quick. So uh, really think about that um, when you're looking at what transportation you want to choose. Yeah, absolutely. And now, um, what do you guys have any recommendations of how students should look for, like, say if they're not going to, if they decide not to live on campus, but they decide to try and find an either apartment or a house off campus, do you guys have any recommendations of uh, where to start or kind of just Google it and go from there or? Um. Man, I would, I mean, definitely look close to campus, but understand that that area, I mean, just a flat could cost you twelve to 1400 a month, easy. Um, a lot of uh, students will find other students that are renting a house together and they all rent rooms out and then they split the cost. Um, but it's, do your homework. It, it's not the mainland where you can get a two bedroom apartment for three or $400 a month. It's, uh, it's a little, it's a little more pricey here. So definitely do your homework. Don't, don't come over here without a plan. Um, but, you know, looking close to campus isn't bad. Uh, it just depends on one, what transportation are you willing to take? Are you willing to get up two hours before classes to take a bus in? Are you going to, you know, drive? Because when traffic is at its best and uh, we're back to campus and it takes me, I live on a clear ride, maybe 35, 40 minutes from campus, but those mornings I go in, it could be a two hour drive. I mean, there's that much traffic in downtown Honolulu. So, you know, you've got to just be prepared for that and, you know, you know, uh, pick your poison when it comes to the transportation part and how far out you want to live. So I live far out because my wife liked it and yeah, happy wife, happy life. Right. So I make that drive every day <laughs> to keep her happy, but you know, you gotta, um, you gotta really do your homework because yeah, traffic can be a beast in the morning, especially if you have an early morning class and, you know, you get hung up in traffic and then it just starts your day really frustrating, so. Yeah, I was going to say, one of the fun, funny things with the commute is you can always tell when the military have a four-day weekend just because all of a sudden the traffic's just a, just enough, a little bit, bit better. But yeah, uh, I came from the west side too for a few years and it was a long one. <laughs> I was like, I can physically see the school from my house. And it still takes me like an hour and a half to get there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, definitely. That's one of the big things, especially coming from mainland. You don't always think about that. You know, of course, like big cities always have really bad traffic, but we do here too. We have one main freeway that goes into town, one main freeway that takes you out of town. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, obviously, the places a little bit farther from town can be cheaper, but traffic comes at a cost, or the price comes at a cost, naturally. Um, some other things to like think about as well, as far as like moving here that people don't always think about is always think about like the pricing, price differences as well for like cost of living. Um, I 
weirdly enough, I've seen gas has been cheaper here than California recently, uh, which is just strange to me because I'm used to everything being more expensive here. But then that food does tend to be a little bit more expensive. So just keep that in mind when budgeting for here. That tends to get people where they'll go to the grocery store and they'll see a gallon of milk for, well, it depends where you shop, um, you know, what kind of benefits you have. If you go to the commissary, it's, you know, your normal mainland prices, but if you go to say a store like Foodland or Safeway, you can find milk for like seven, eight dollars. So just strategize wisely. <laughs> Um, now, I know this, uh, this is a good question that Mackenzie's asking about the quarantining and in the, uh, the residence halls ahead of time and how that works with school. So as of right now, just so you guys all know kind of what the COVID situation is here on the island if you're not from here, um, our COVID case numbers are actually really low. As of today, I think we're at 38 uh, per, uh, per week or per day on average for the past seven days, uh, about a 1.2% positivity rate. Uh, so we're super proud of that, that our islands, the islands, that's between the entire state, are doing really well with COVID. So right now, uh, we don't have any required quarantine when coming into the state. Uh, basically, there's a lot of very specific rules for coming into the state. You ha do have to prove a negative uh, COVID test uh, 72 hours prior to uh, boarding your last leg of your flight. Uh, if you have specific questions about exactly how that works with coming into the state and all of the that I definitely recommend uh, for you guys to check out. Just Google search, uh, you know, Hawaii, you know, travel regulations right now, just because it does change on, it does, it hasn't changed for a while, but it does change from month to month. Uh, so I would definitely say to check there, just to make sure you get the most up-to-date information uh, from the state of Hawaii government. Uh, but as of now, no quarantining as long as you have those negative tests. So that's always a win. Is there, uh, for James and Michelle, is there any other advice that you guys can think of? Uh, anything that, you know, you wish students knew besides, I know we covered transportation, which was great, but maybe um, even a little bit more about like student life side of things. I know I'm, for James, I've gotten a lot of questions about students being concerned. They're like, oh, well, I'm 27, I'm 28 going into my undergrad. I don't really want to be hanging out with a bunch of like, you know, 18 to 19 year olds is that going to be an issue or is there going to be other students similar to my age you know to my age and style of living it's funny because i'm going through that right now so i'm trying to return to school in the fall and my anxiety levels are super high so <laughs> i you know it even though i've separated you know five years ago it's probably been two decades since i've been in school so uh you know i had somebody tell me use that fear as a motivator attack it you know we're used to whatever we did in the military, we were really, we were in our comfort zone. So now we're stepping out of that and just, you know, start preparing yourself to, uh, there's not, there's not going to be anybody telling you where to be, what time to be there, what to wear, what to bring. So now you're on your own. So just prepare yourself for that. Make sure you're good time management, excuse me. <coughs> you know, the time management part is going to be extremely vital. Um, when I left the military and uh, just starting to use my calendar more and really putting everything on and you know so it was it was a little bit different for me but uh, just coming into school making sure that you connect with people at the school already you know talk to someone that's already walked that path. Uh, we have uh, we're starting up a program called Peer Advisors for Veterans in Education. It's called PAVE. And, you know, and we're trying to start that. So we're trying to get the upperclassmen to be peer advisors for our incoming freshmen or our transfer students. And that's what we can do with my office. You can email us. We can, I can connect you to my uh, VA work study students who are all Manoa students, they're all veterans, but you can talk one-on-one. -on -one. That's what our talk story does, our vet talk does, is we all connect together so that, you know, all of us older students who have families and don't really feel we have anything in common with you know, some of the other students, we have our own little space where we can gather and talk and, and we feel a little more comfortable. So, you know, join us on the vet talk, email my office and, you know, ask us those questions, you know, or, you know, if you want to do a Zoom, we can set up a Zoom for you guys. So it, it's all right there for you. It's just, you know, connecting. That's why that vet lounge is so important to us because that's a, it's a meeting place. You know, that's our little meet and greet spot where everybody comes in, we take them in and you know, you start talking, you find out, oh, we were both in the army or we both did field artillery or we did something similar in another branch. So 
uh, just, you know, connecting to those that are already here, uh, that have gone through, you know, that have gone through the process and they understand the process. That way you don't have so many roadblocks coming at you or you're not so, because, you know, you get lost when it's not somebody, you know, telling you what to do all the time. Now it's like, oh, I've got to figure all this out on my own and it can be overwhelming. So, hey, talk to us. That's what we're here for. That's what Michelle does. You know, they help walk you through that process. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to look at you any different. Just something new and we got to figure it out and we're all in this together. Yeah, I could not agree more. Like, I, I think that's one of the big differences um, of, that makes our campus really special is the fact that everyone, even though we may have been asked questions a hundred times, everyone is so ready to help our students and just really be there for you especially during this COVID time when we understand no one really knows what's going on. And, you know, that's just been 2020 and that's pouring into 2021. Um, times are scary, you know, especially if you guys are coming from, you know, out of state, moving, you know, at least minimum of, you know, 2,500 miles away from home uh, where your uh, family can be. That can be very intimidating. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it is quite scary. <laughs> um, but you guys will definitely, there's so much like, just community here. Uh, so definitely do not be afraid to reach out. We have some of the friendliest people. I know we got ranked in the top 10 colleges uh, for, I think, oh no, it's actually, I think we're ranked number one for the happiest city in the US. So we're, this is back in 2017, 2018. Uh, so we were super proud of that. You'll definitely see that spirit return to campus as COVID, as we overtake COVID, of course, as well. Uh, our campus is one of those campuses where you walk around and you wave to somebody and they will wave back. Um, can't see that too often on the mainland where you what, smile and wave at somebody and they just like look at you weird. They're like, what are you doing? Um, so definitely feel free to go up to any student. Um, they're so friendly. I can't ex uh, express that enough. I oh, do have a really great question um, here from Lawrence that says, uh, can you talk about the process of paperwork once our COEs have been received for uh, the UHMBA email? like which uh, order to schedule classes, verify schedule, et cetera. So Michelle, do you mind kind of just uh, going through that process again quickly? Yeah, um, thank you, Lauren, for your question. So for when the student emails us requesting for new student paperwork, we normally send them, it's about, I would say usually around three forms that they have to fill out. So, um, the first one's a VA student information sheet, which is like a general information. And then the student, there's a student responsibility form, which is basically kind of like a contract uh, or guideline of um, while you're using your VA benefits at UH Manoa. And then there's one more that's like, after you've registered for all your courses, then you would fill that form out and then take it to your advisor for approval. And then, from there, um, normally I suggest as soon as you know the date you're registering, um, then make sure you, after you register, fill out the form, uh, the enrollment form, and then get your advisor to approve of, of that. I know some colleges might have, like you might have to schedule an appointment to meet with your advisor. So just make sure that you're aware of when uh, to schedule that after you've registered, just because um, those time blocks or meeting appointments with your advisor, it could fill up really quickly. Yeah, but it's yeah. best um, to email us for the forms. Okay, thanks so much, Michelle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put um, the different links as well in the chat, so that way students, if you have questions about the exact details of the steps as well, uh, you'll see that in the chat, so that way you can reference back to that. I love it. Any other questions that students, students you have? We have just a few minutes left. Yes, I don't see any more questions for today. So if uh, we could go ahead and wrap up the session, just to, uh, James and Michelle, if you guys can share your favorite thing about campus and then uh, your favorite thing about living here in Hawaii. 
Uh, let's see, favorite thing about campus is um, I, I really like uh, falling under the uh, student equity, excellence and diversity department. Um, I think they're a great fun family to work for, but um, I haven't run into any bad administration on campus. Uh, every, like you were saying, everybody's super friendly. Everybody works with you. If I send an email, I get a, an answer back. And you know, after the military of such stringent you know, rank structures, you know, there's so many people I've known on campus that I just recently found out for doctors and I've been calling them by first name the whole time. And I'm like, oh, um, doctor. And they're like, don't you dare do it. And I'm just like, but because I'm used to the rank structure, you know, that's how you roll in the military. So I just like the friendliness of the campus. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful campus. If you haven't visited, you've probably done a virtual tour, but that doesn't do any justice. It's just a beautiful campus to work on. And you know, we always say lucky we live in Hawaii. Um, my favorite thing about Hawaii is I'm a golfer. And for the last four years, I've never worn pants to, uh, on golf. I've only worn shorts and I've played through all these snowstorms on the mainland. I've been out on the course every weekend going, man, I wish they could all be here. But, you know, uh, I, I, I'm thankful to be here, uh, being able to play golf and raise my grandson here in such a beautiful place that he'll have memories to think back on when he goes to the mainland with uh with his parents so yep that's it thank you um for me um I recently graduate or I graduated a couple semesters ago from UH Manoa so I'll be just talking from like the student perspective I would say that there are so many opportunities for students um like studying abroad or scholarships or uh, club life and uh, even internships and job opportunities as well. So definitely make sure to take advantage of those. And then as far as Hawaii life, I was born and raised in Hawaii. And so I would have to say the food scene here is really amazing and diverse. So there's always something new that you have to try. And yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, I could not agree more. The food scene alone, oh man. I, call, I always joke about there's always, of course, the freshman 15 uh, that people always joke about. Uh, and then I always say that there's the Hawaii 20 that no matter if you're in school or if you're in the military stationed here, it just, I was going to say, sometimes the morning workouts are just not enough. The food is just too good to everyone. <laughs> if people, if you uh, make fun of spam, don't make fun of spam until you get here and you try it the way that uh, everyone eats it here. It's completely the way you cook, they cook it here and like the different sauces, like let's show you in whatever style, it's very different than your traditional, what you learn on the mainland style. So just give, always give the food here a chance. Uh, it's delicious. Even if you don't know what it is, try it anyways. You never know, unless you have allergies, then be smart. But anything else is fair game. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys both so much for kind of uh, sharing a little bit more about your experience, also about the benefits and how students can also, you know, come to Manoa and really make it their own. So we really appreciate you both being here today to be able to assist uh, our um, veterans and current military personnel who are joining us, the prospective students and accepted students. I know we've had a mix here today. Uh, for students, we want to say, of course, thank you all for joining us as well. Just a few reminders. We do have our virtual front desk um, that you can join and talk to our missions team, as well as we do have uh, where you can make, uh, make an appointment. You can email us. You can also email uh, both of these departments as well. Just definitely, just so you guys know, there's so many different ways to get a hold of us. If you're never not sure, just Google it. <laughs> you know, you can find all of our information there, but always reach out to us, um, especially like James said, like we are all here for you, you know, so. Uh, thank you all again so much for joining, and uh, we'll talk with you soon. Just so you guys know, we will go ahead and post this recording online uh, and also send out a follow-up email to you all. And there will be a survey in that follow-up email, so definitely be sure to go ahead and fill that out. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, this is a new program that we're doing every week, so we want to keep growing it, improving it. So we hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and aloha. We'll talk with you soon. Thank you.